Hello everybody, we're going to be doing a review of the 2022 Toronto Argonauts season. Uh, so if you are new, please make sure to subscribe. If you're new to me, new to the CFL, whatever the case may be, I'd love to have you here along the way as I try to do this as a career. That being said, let's talk about Toronto season. Going into this season, myself especially, I felt like Toronto was a team that might have overperformed in 2021. They weren't a team that was really probably going to blow you out of the water, especially if you're a good team. They're probably going to struggle to beat you. And early on in this year, it looked like that might be the case. So they get their win where they barely scrape by. They get a Boris Beatty field goal late or a David uh, Cote missed field goal. I can't remember what happened there uh, late in that game. So they beat Montreal. Good win, I guess, because Montreal was a playoff team the season prior, but they weren't one of those dominant teams in the league. The next week, they end up getting absolutely pumped by the BC Lions, 44-3. That is really where I started to say, yep, I had some concerns. I had some concerns, so this is exactly where we were headed. Things go on a little bit, but there's some highs and some lows. I look at this season for them. They dealt with some injuries like every team does. Andrew Harris was not the Andrew Harris that we were expecting him to be, that he has been. So they kind of rolled around with their backfield a little bit. Uh, had AJ Olette, but the big thing for them was being able to have Curly Gittin Jr., Devoris Daniels, other guys like that on the offensive end, and then Jamal Peters on defense. Of course, he's not there with the team anymore as he signed with the Falcons, I believe. He is just the Tiger Cat killer as he has like six interceptions in games played against Hamilton. He was part of the factor there for them on defense, along with some other guys that they just really were able to put together an impressive season. In fact, this season finished with them being 11-7 and on the year which was the best season by a Toronto team in, I don't remember what it was, I did a tweet about it, but it definitely was since like the mid-2000s at the earliest. So that was good for them there, but there were some questions going into the playoffs, you know, especially about McLeod Bethel Thompson. He had some highs, he had some lows. He was one of the quarterbacks that you like to watch, I guess, if you are a fan of unpredictability. You never know, is he going to go off for 300 yards and three touchdowns, or is he going to have a game where he goes something like 10 of 27 and then has two interceptions and, you know, something like 98 yards or something like that. It was never that bad, but it was one of those situations. So they go into this game against the Alouettes and they end up playing the Eastern Final there at home. This time around, they're able to come out with a win at the Eastern Final and they go on to the Grey Cup. The Grey Cup, of course, is pitting them against the 15 and 3 Winnipeg Blue Bombers. The Blue Bombers are a team that's pretty old as well, uh, but they have the best season in franchise history, being 15 and 3. I am not going to lie. I expected Winnipeg to go out there and really do business on them and just put in the work. And I feel like part of it was Winnipeg being too cute, but Toronto taking advantage of opportunities. While they were very pass heavy in some quarters, I think the second quarter especially was where things kind of were wild, uh, where they ran the ball once and then threw it like 14 times or something like that. They were able to stay in this game. Uh, Richardson, of course, was a big, big factor here on special teams. You can't deny it. And even Chad Kelly, the guy that looks like he'll be Toronto starter this year, played the hero as MBT went out with a hand injury. Ultimately, for Toronto, they go on to win this Grey Cup 24-23. I don't want to say that it's one of the biggest upsets in CFL history because I do feel like Toronto's 11-7 record is one where you look at and say, could it be better, could it be worse? But it was a pretty big win for them as an underdog. And I don't exactly know what more to say with this. I have been talking recently in season reviews, saying, is this season a success or a failure? The answer to this is basically exactly what you'd expect it to be, a complete success. There is nothing more that you can say. Uh, there's no way you could view this as a failure. They backed up the 2021 season where they put together another winning record, which is great considering the 2018 and 19 seasons that they had where they were just pitiful. Uh, but they backed up another winning season with another winning season. They won the division out east yet again. They had their best season in probably 15 to 20 years. They go on to get another playoff win, which is great for them. And then, of course, they go on to have an absolutely massive performance in the Great Cup that we'll be talking about for years. Maybe it wasn't one where they were dominant, because they definitely weren't. But they were able to stay in it. They were able to deal with the ups and the downs of the season. And they were able to show that they can, at points, take care of other teams. So for this season, it was great because you got to see Toronto back on top in such a big CFL market that has had issues with attendance since they've been good. Uh, the crowds have been a little bit better and a little bit better. So if we can continue to build off that, that would be great because the crowds were pretty rough, especially you look at like 2018, 2019, things were not great there. And in the past two seasons, things have continued to climb. So that was great too for them. 
They feature a lot of guys coming back. Quentin McManus is one of them too. Uh, Hino Kumwamba, they have Jordan Williams now, which is going to be great. So we're going to talk about all that in our season review or preview, I should say, for them here in a couple of weeks. But this is the review for the 11-7 Grey Cup winning Toronto Argonauts as they continue to not lose in the Grey Cup. That has become a tradition for Toronto as of late, and this was about as good as it gets for them. So what are your thoughts on Toronto's season? Is it a success? If you have it being a failure, I need to know why, uh, but leave your thoughts down below in the comments. Also, please make sure to like this video if you enjoyed it, subscribe if you're new. Everybody stay safe and have a great night.